Hello and welcome to the first lecture of course on data enabled tribological engineering from experiments to predictive model. Topic of this lecture is introduction to tribology. In my view, tribology is a study of the friction, lubrication and wear and that is very crucial for designing an operating system having relatively moving components. Tribology aims to enhance energy efficiency product durability and system reliability by addressing issues such as energy losses, surface degradation and environmental sustainability. Unfortunately, tribology seems to be very sophisticated field of study that need test sample that are examined at the level ranging from micro scale to nano scale. Therefore, an important question arises in order to improve the functionality longevity, reliability of the mechanical system, how can engineers acquire knowledge and expertise in controlling these tribological processes? In my view, there are three major challenges. Most of the time, the data that is provided only covers narrow domain. A lot of time, a real product might face situation which was never thought before. Further, it is very difficult to guess how environmental changes will affect the tribal performance. Last but not the least, with the continuous technology improvement, understanding and expectation may change over the time. Therefore, a comprehensive knowledge of tribology in simple but effective manner is very much required. That is why we are introducing this course. Let us start with the tribology. We say this term even though was coined in 1966 by Peter Jost and currently most of the dictionary are covering the definition of tribology including the Oxford dictionary and definition often has been decided or uh, given as branch of science and technology that studies friction and wear phenomena that results from interaction of the solid surface. So, here the solid surface has been emphasized. So, what do we mean by the surface? We say surface is basically top few layers. It is not only the only top most layer, but top few layers that separate volume, the bulk volume from the surrounding environment. That these layers on the top of the bulk layer affect tribal performance. Just to illustrate this, I am showing this figure. You are able to see this figure here. Now, this is a bulk phase. There is a work hardening layer, there are oxide layer, adsorbed layer, contamination layer. So, there are four layers on the bulk layers itself and their thickness is an angstrom level, much, much smaller. But all these layers will affect the tribal performance that has been mentioned over here. Just for the example, uh, we have a taken my, uh, we say that uh, profile of using the 3D profilometer of the one rough surface. So, you are able to observe the surfaces are very rough, even there are some sort of corrosion, contamination on the surface. Naturally, when these surfaces come in a contact, tribal performance varies very significantly. So, that is why we say understanding tribology is critical, particularly when there is a so many parameters and still maybe even is introduced in 1966, but still it is contributing 23 percent of worldwide energy consumption which was published in one report which was published in 2017. I took this figure from my book which was published in 2016 fundamental of engineering tribology with application. If you have interest you can go through this book also it will give more knowledge about the complete tribology. Now, coming back to the tribal surfaces what are the tribal surfaces we say that one surface has to move other surface has to be stationary, even though both the surfaces are moving, then what we will do, we will take a relative velocity. Now, suppose this velocity that has a velocity u1, this has a velocity u2. So, what will be the relative velocity it will be u is equal to u1 minus u2 and that is what we say one surface is moving with a, relay, a u velocity, other surface is stationary. In addition to that, this velocity, we also require a load that is apply load W. So, if there are two things velocity and load and two surfaces are in contact, tribology is bound to happen. Now, this uh, uh, the, the figure we have shown very small patch, 
but this will be common in almost every case it will there is a spherical contact with a cylindrical contact with a planar contact this kind of phenomena will happen in almost all kind of the surfaces so for example we can take a ball bearing we can take a roller bearing we can take a gears we can take a cam follower we can take a mechanical seal etc etc all everywhere the, this phenomena will occur again more clear clarity has been given in this book uh, which was published in 2016 and I have been author of this book. Now let us take a more closer uh, understanding and try to get more close understanding. We have shown here the gear pair and then you can see this uh, we have magnified in this manner. Uh, you are able to see there is a surface 1 and surface 2. Surface 1 has a green line, surface 2 has a red line. Now, we are trying to examine what will happen because at the nano level almost every surface is a rough. When these asperities come into contact, what are the possibilities? One possibility is the asperity will break, other possibility is that elastic deformation of asperity will happen and third and last information will be that it will be plastically deformed. So, if asperity breakage occurs, then we will be getting wear debris. If there is elastic deformation, no problem, it will not in the, that will very be give the good results to us. But if there is a plastic deformation, surface structure is going to change. And that is what has been shown here. The initial pinion profile has been shown with a dotted line and continuous line is showing the running in uh, wear of the or maybe say running in profile of the pinion. So, this is what uh, um, we have a possibilities. So, if I try to summarize all this, we can say the two bodies under tribo condition as I say tribo condition we need to have velocity or relative velocity and we need to have applied load. So, two bodies under tribo condition experience. Now, this experience can be very rapid, it can be gradual, it can be very very slow rate also possible, but almost all the surface will go through surface degradation. It is not the surface will be saved without uh, degradation, degradation is bound to happen. It can be in angstrom level, it can be much lesser, but degradation will be there. So, we need to figure out what will be the expected life, is it 20 years, 50 years, 100 years, 1000 years and then based on that we can really do a calculation. So, surface degradation accounting is very, very important. As uh, there is a possibility of asperity breakage, then in that situation we will also get some sort of debris and that as I mentioned the debris can be at a nanometer to micrometer level. Debris itself will play major role even in lubrication or wear or in using friction or reducing friction. There is a possibility. So, what we can say wear of the contacting surface is a logical consequences that arise under relative motion. It is not that wear will not occur, wear will occur bound to happen, but we can reduce by carefully designing the surfaces or carefully designing the systems. Now, let us take a couple of examples which I have analyzed or uh, uh, done on my uh, maybe we took a some sort of consultancy project from different industries. So, first example is a carbon graphite seal, where the carbon graphite seal has been used is basically used in a paper industry and in paper industry there is a some sort of joint and then a steam passes through that and that hits a surface and paper pulp passes on that that is the evaporation of the water happens on the surface and then this complete uh, steam is sealed. So, that should not come out in environment using the this mechanical seal itself and we are able to see this kind of wear happens on mechanical seal. What will be the results of the, this mechanical wear? We say seal failure or maybe seal failure so it is not really stopping the steam there is a possibility of some steam is coming out. The seal failure causes the fluid leakage in this case is particularly steam that means uh, efficiency will reduce there will be loss of efficiency. One more thing is that a person who is operating this equipment if he is subjected to the steam of 170 degree temperature naturally there will be safety issues. So, safety risk will also arise not only this maintaining the whatever the temperature which we want to do maintain something like a for evaporation temperature uh, that 100 degree that also will reduce even the pressure also will reduce. So, maintaining pressure and temperature becomes a little more difficult when there is a seal wear. Another one if you are trying to repair 
or maybe otherwise there are direct losses also then there will be operational cost will increase. Not only this if you want to really replace the seal then downtime will come and then we will have also some sort of sacrification of the resources because new seal has to be made naturally some resources will be utilized for that and that is bad for the sustainability. So, we want to minimize this, uh, this wear as low as possible. Let us take another example cam wear. In this case particularly this uh, the cam wear uh, uh, has been shown in this uh, zone particularly you can see here there is a cam wear. Now, what is the problem with this here the surfaces are very good you can see here in this surface very good if this kind of wear occurs what will be major problem particularly because this whole setup has been used to fill toothpaste in tubes. Naturally when the, there is a some sort of a wear there will be vibration, there will be some sort of a jerky motion, there will be some erratic motion. So, that is why we say then that will cause erratic filling of the toothpaste in tube. When it happens sometime toothpaste will get maybe say instead of 50 gram it will have a 53 gram or 54 gram and in other places a possibility 45 gram, 46 gram something like that. So, that will cause a quality issues that means the rejection of number of toothpaste will be huge that will cause a major loss to company. Another thing comes that because of the wear even the vibration and noise will be created that will create a more environmental issues and that operating issues. So, if you want to really uh, address this then you need to change complete cam. If you change complete cam it will cost a lot and again the downtime will come. So, this is important that we need to minimize wear. Again, again and again I am saying we cannot stop, but we can minimize, we can enhance a life from 1 year to 10 years, more the demand we can enhance a life to 15 years, but we cannot say it is a forever and that is what we say engineering is meant for that purpose that we are time dependent, we need to design every product with a time how many years of the life you really require. Let us take another exam journal bearing. I have shown here the journal bearing uh, of the engine as such this is what uh, uh, here the wear occurs because of the abrasive particle or dust particle which come in oil. In other case I have shown also rubbing where the lubricant which we were using was not sufficient viscous or maybe did not have a sufficient additives. So, some sort of uh, rubbing has happened on this case. So, both are bad one is abrasive wear other is a rubbing wear both are the bad in the situation. So, what is the really problem? Because of this wear the surfaces become a rough, whenever the, there is a surface or a more rough naturally it will cause a more friction, if there is a more friction it will generate a more heat, if there is a more heat generation temperature will increase even the lubricant whatever we are going to use or we are using that will deteriorate. That means, a uh, one problem related to wear is causing a problem related to friction, that is causing a problem related to heat, that is causing a problem related to degradation of oil. So, it becomes a chain, one start thing happens and it will continuously increase. Not on this, on top of that even the load carrying capacity will reduce. So, suppose initially we design a bearing having a 1000 Newton load carrying capacity, because of wear it may finally turn out to be eight, uh, 800 Newton after 100 hours then maybe say 500 Newton and finally, there will be possibility of the breakage that is what we call is a risking a breakdown of the machine. So, we can say where induced imperfections or the, the, the roughness increases that will induce a vibration and noise and because of this vibration there is a possibility other associate component also may grow the go through the fatigue process. So, uh, it will cause the failure of other machine components also. Not only this even the wear particle which will come out from a surface in this case that will cause a oxidation of the oil also. So, it will cause a damage to oil also. Not only heat, but particle which are coming because they are fresh particle, nascent particle, virgin particle they will react with the lubricant also. So, in this in short we can say it will cause a more friction that means more energy consumption reduction in efficiency and because we need to change a bearing then again it will be sustainability issues will come because we really require more raw material in the situation. Another example is a magnetic bearing, magnetic bearing that has been shown here the magnet 1 here in this case and magnet 2 has been shown here both are permanent magnet and the permanent magnet they have been kept in repulsion mode that means they should not touch each other at all. But 
if there is a misalignment, if there is a some vibration, then there is a possibility that shaft or magnet shaft can touch the bearing sleeve on them. And this has been shown that because of that there is an excessive wear at the surface particularly at the edge side this is because of the misalignment. So, we can see here the misalignment and vibration resulted uh, where are the bearing surface of permanent magnet. So, what is the problem in this that does not stop only here because the particles are coming out they get trapped between the surfaces and that will enhance the wear rate. So, trapping a particle between the permanent magnet distance becomes a 0 and then they change the polarity one way or another way cause more rubbing, more demagnetization, more problem. So, that is why we say that even there is a wear then demagnetization of magnet happens rapidly and that becomes a very big problem or significant problem. Another example which we, we did for the industry is a multi row roller bearing. In this case here the, the right hand side this has been shown a kind of three dimensional image these are the number of rollers in the, and then there are two rows of course overall it was a four row bearings and then even though there is an initiation of one crack if there is a one crack naturally load carrying capacity will come down and that will cause a more and more misalignment that is why we say degraded bearing may become misaligned it increases the noise and vibration. So, again initiation may be little bit but it is going to continuously increase that is why we require many time continuous monitoring. So, we can do immediate action we should not really reach to this kind of failure and that is why we often say we should diagnose fault not a failure because after failure we can improve only in this next product. But if we are able to figure out fault at the beginning that will really help us we can change a lubricant we can change some sort of uh, additional bearing or we can add some uh, support system or reduce a load reduce a speed we can do remedial actions. So, we are more interested to figure out the faults not a failure and this is a complete failure which has been shown in this case. And then in the similar the way previous mentioned the uh, previous example we mentioned that wear produces the particle that creates an abrasive particle and that shorten the life of the bearing itself. And then if you are going through the more and more uh, frequent wear then maintenance uh, of course online monitoring, monitoring is the one thing, but it will cause a more and more maintenance activity more and more downtime more and more losses. So, overall it is not going to be very fruitful. So, what we can see here the wear induces a friction leads to increase the temperature reduce a lubrication effectiveness raising uh, energy consumption increasing energy consumption and reducing the efficiency and that is what then this course has been introduced to understand each and every phenomena properly and then use a machine learning algorithm to predict well in a advance so that remedial action can be taken at the fault level not at the failure level. So, this is what we say the surface degradation is a major thing now I have right hand side this is the fun figure which has shown when we start with uh, and then the surfaces or maybe operation then performance can be very high that has been shown here high performance, but with a service time as I mentioned that where is a necessary evil it will happen we can reduce, but we cannot stop. So, with a continuous wear there is a possibility that performance will lose or maybe the uh, there will be loss of the performance and that has been shown as a green line in this case it is acceptable. So, we are going ahead with that however, if the performance is reduced further like in this case a red color the failure will occur. So, we want to stick to this kind of uh, you know, the curve we do not want the curve bands in a such a manner that even we are not able to meet this kind of uh, uh, service life. So, we can design as I say the wear is a will come or will be there and we can design the product by estimating what will be the service life if we are able to do that that is we are fulfilling our function. Now, just to elaborate this we can say here when two objects or maybe two surfaces come in a contact then the, there will be a roughness of that uh, roughness because of that there will be asperities and most of the time the contact happens at the asperities level only and that has been shown in this figure also. Of course, there is a lubricant layer this is the lubricant layer this is the lubricant layer has been attached to the surface and we say that in context of the friction and wear it is seen the surface undergoes continuous temporal variation that means whatever surface softness initially 
it may change with the time, it may improve, it may decrease. So, that is why we say that we need to think about a specific film thickness. If a specific film thickness is on higher side, we are on a safer side that means we will be meeting the service life. If uh, specific film thickness is going to reduce may be lesser than 1, lesser than 0.5, even point reaching to 0.1 or 0.2, naturally we are moving to the this side. So, that is why we continuously monitor uh, this uh, film thickness in the situation, so that overall we are able to predict the results well in advance what is really happening. So, we can say that to mitigate, if you want to really uh, reduce uh, and, uh, and this uh, we are related problem, then we bring some sort of lubricant, lubricant be kind of a thick lubrication or thin lubrication. This is a classical traditional thick lubrication, we say earlier everybody was thinking oh two surfaces should be completely separated by using lubricant, but this has also indicated when we are separating two surfaces completely with the lubricant, it causes a more friction loss, but if we are separating just enough that these two surfaces should be remain in separation and then they should not come in a contact should not cause a wear that is more than sufficient and that has been shown in this case the two surfaces even though they are in contact, but there is a lubricant layer on a surface. If there is a lubricant layer on a surface we are serving our purpose that is what we have uh, aimed to do with all kind of tribal pairs, but question comes do if I really put a only one mono layer maybe say in some like strong label, some nanometer label, will that be sufficient? No. Reason being when we choose a lubricant, it has to have very low shear strength, that means it should be easily rub off. If it is the case, then we really require a multi-layering, a multi-layer maybe instead of one layer, we can go with a 10 layers, 50 layers also and then we need to have a replenishment also. If the one layer is getting removed, there is another layer keep coming on the surface. So, that is where the we really need to design the lubricant, we need to think about the travelogy which really separate two surfaces not with a thick lubrication, not completely separation, just sufficient. So, the wear is low, friction is low, we want both on the lower side, our reducing the wear in this situation we can minimize the wear, we can remove the wear, but still and when a starting and a stopping wear will occur, I will describe in a later lecture about those things that wear will occur. So, we cannot make a zero wear will be there, but why do we unnecessarily waste our energy or maybe say uh, more um, uh, friction losses caused by the thick lubrication. So, thick lubrication will be going for the some friction losses, we do not want that, we want to minimize friction, we want to minimize wear and these two are not directly related parameter, we need to work individually on these two parameter to get optimum surface to fulfill the real purposes. So, let us take what we have talked about the uh, lubricants, what kind of lubricants we are talking, we can choose a solid lubricants, of course a major problem with a solid lubricant is if there is a some sort of defect then that cannot be uh, immediately uh, healed while coming to the grease, it has a those properties. It is a like a semi solid, we use the word grease as a semi solid. So, semi solid, it has a liquid properties as well as it has a solid properties. After that, we can go for the high viscosity oil, we can go for the low viscosity oil, even air or gas can act as a lubricant, even water can act as a lubricant. But what are the criteria? We say as the rotational speed or the sliding speed is increasing, we will move from top to bottom side. That means, if this is 100 rpm or not 100 rpm, uh, maybe say mm per second, then I will choose this one. Maybe when we are going with a something like 100 meter per second, we may choose this kind of thing. So, there is a possibility as a velocity increases, we will go with this, but the worst trend is for the load. At the lower increase uh, with the load, we will go for the gas to solid. That means, if it is a 1 Newton meter load, I may go for the gas, if, if uh, there is a 1 mega Newton load, I may go for the solid lubricants. So, this is the where of course, uh, we are talking about the load, if actually it will be pressure because area will be counted also as a one of the main feature. So, these are the uh, kind of relative performance. Now, when we are saying only the choosing a lubricant, then we need to also think about the wear. 
Now, there are or we say the lubrication mechanism because uh, where it will depend heavily on lubrication mechanism, what kind of lubrication mechanism we are trying to introduce. Is it a hydrodynamic? Is it elastro hydrodynamic? Is it a boundary lubrication? Or there is no lubrication. Of course, we say completely reject unlubricated because our course says the lubrication is a must. Every surface should have a lubricant layer. It can be boundary, it can be EHL, it can be uh, hydrodynamic. However, there is a one more term comes here the mixed lubrication. So, mixed lubrication is also possible. So, we, we need to think in totality one is a lubricant, other one is a lubrication mechanism, how we are really establishing lubricant layer on the surface. And if you look at that, um, um, the way, the what is a recent trend, recent trend is that we go for the low viscosity oil, something like this, even though there is a need of high viscosity oil, but high viscosity oil will cause a little more friction. So, I may choose a low viscosity oil and I may choose some sort of a nanoparticle or nano additives that has been shown here. If I choose a base oil, something like this uh, and uh, instead of, uh, uh, apart from this, now the next one is that I am mean just mixing graphene additives in that. You can see there is a significant variation here the uh, where it is something like uh, around 8, here it comes around 7 or maybe 7.2 something. So, where a reduction is there. Of course, with the increase in a load, again the, this effect is not uh, getting diminished. So, we need to uh, think about what is the really contact load also. With the increase in a contact load, quite possible percentage of the graphene nano additives may be changed, may not be sufficient whatever we are assuming at the 100 uh, cont uh, Newton contact load, may not be sufficient as a 350 uh, the load or Newton load on that. So, we need to really consider all this aspect really uh, properly and then we need to estimate everything appropriately. Now, this is what we say each surface in a boundary lubrication because we are talking about this is coated with a chemically bonded we will be discussing about when we really cover this kind of topic uh, boundary lubrication and mixed lubrication. Now, here we are saying in a boundary lubrication not necessary two surfaces are completely separated. That is why we are using the word boundary lubrication. Then we draw again here, there is a one surface, other surface is coming in a contact with this and then keeping a separation. So, here still there is a contact, a boundary lubrication say if there is a contact and it is not causing the plastic deformation, there is a uh, then the rubbing happen uh, or maybe uh, causing, causing the some sort of wear debris removal, then it will be the boundary lubrication and then we are not able to separate completely. So, ideally, ideally we should work on EHL side, ideally I feel that we should establish elastro hydrodynamic lubrication mechanism. Why we are using the word elastro hydrodynamic lubrication mechanism that needs a little more uh, consideration. However, we have a lot of data available we can understand from that point of view. So, this is what we can see here uh, this graph that is what we call a Sommerfeld number and particularly if you are able to locate this this uh, smallest uh, the at the bottom portion this is a EHL is very sensitive and then if we are really missing little bit it will move to this side. That means, EHL if it is not carefully designed, it will move to left side, it will cause a mixed lubrication and mixed lubrication may cause a boundary lubrication, boundary lubrication may cause kind of unlubricated or high wear case also. So, those are possible. Now, when we are choosing the material, again there are enough uh, materials available in a literature which, which materials should be selected. So, data are available as I say number of experimental data are already available uh, to us. So, which matter really we uh, which material we should choose that is uh, we need to really think about this. Naturally, when we are choosing a material we need to think what are the features, what are the parameters. Like in this case it has been shown hardness is the one of the parameter. What is the rule of hardness in reducing wear and reducing friction? Then second parameter is a Young's modulus. What is the rule of Young's modulus in a reduction of the friction and reduction of the wear? Then comes a thermal expansion coefficient. Really what is a weightage and what is the really importance of this factor? Quite possible 
all four parameters are very effective are really we require like in this case cost we know the cost will be always a one of the factor lesser cost will be always a preferable if i choose a lesser cost or least cost and based on that i choose a material naturally i'll directly go to this material this is the cheapest one i'll choose a zirconium oxide but if it is really required a very low thermal expansion coefficient i will not choose because it has a high highest value then what is the relative importance am i giving more weightage to cost or am i giving more weightage to thermal expansion that comes into the picture another thing is that hardness now if uh, the dlc has a highest hardness something like uh, 8000 wicker hardness so shall i choose directly and go hard with the dlc because most of the literature say oh choose directly with the very high hard surface no, not necessary because sometime in EHL we require Young's modulus stroke also and that is important. So, this is very important for us to select the right parameter so the results are overall in our favor. Now, this is uh, what another uh, thing has uh, uh, the, the way previously I mentioned sometime uh, we are choosing a raw oil which is a low viscous oil and then we are choosing some sort of nanoparticles and then again there is an optimization of the nanoparticles what is the percentage and as I mentioned also they are quite possible at the low load there will be one kind of percentage will be uh, sufficient maybe at the higher load we require slightly different kind of percentage. So, it will be more or less a load specification and the speed specification, temperature specification and maybe humidity specification this phase specification will be really required. So, that means we are not going to deal with a single variable two variable there is a possibility of multi variables. So, we need to account all those. So, this is what curve has been shown the coefficient of friction with increase in the load in the, the initially it is reducing and after that it is in, uh, continuously increasing. So, this is a very trend different kind of trend reason being that when we are using the Sommerfeld number it is a denominator that means in it is always that increasing in the load it will shift to this side and means friction will increase, but in reality it is not happening or maybe so, though we, we can think about whatever the literature we are getting, whatever the results we are getting from literature, we need to understand, we need to critically analyze those uh, results and then come up with the right thing and maybe we really require a number of correction factors from one situation to other situation and that is where uh, this kind of course is very important to understand all do not believe only on one parameter, do not believe only on two parameters and start taking decision for comprehensive knowledge this kind of course is very very important and we need to really go through it. So, this is another uh, figure uh, has been given where the temperature uh, we are showing that viscosity itself is a function of temperature that means if I choose a viscosity at the 40 degree here that will not be good enough. I need to really figure out what is the actual viscosity at the operating temperature, how do I get it? Operating temperature again requires some analysis, operating temperature really requires how much is the friction because of the friction how much is heat generation, if there is a heat generation how much is the heat dissipation, if there is a heat dissipation what is the thermal conductivity of the lubricant what is the thermal conductivity of the materials. So, these things are really very much required and that is why that they will say that we really require all together and that is why that this course has been given we say data enabled because we have enormous number of data in literature. So, data enabled tribological engineering. So, we are teaching the principles of tribology with the data accounting data and then we, we have a number of experimental results already available already mentioned in the literature quite possible not all experimental results will be very useful. So, we need to extract good results useful results for our purpose and to uh, form some sort of a predictive model and which need to be further verified using some experimental results which we can do in our own um, lab or maybe our own company. So, this is the overall aim understand tribology in comprehensive manner and utilize literature extensively because some people have already done a lot of work. Why do we waste that work? Why not we learn from them? If they have made a mistake, we identify those mistakes, we improve those mistakes, correct those mistakes so that overall benefit happens to the society and that is why we say this kind of course is very important to understand and quite possible this analogy can be utilized for some other 
purposes only. It cannot be restricted or it will not be restricted only for tribological application for other cases also can be utilized. Let us take another data was uh, showing in this case there is a coefficient of friction data it is a published data and uh, it is very strange thing is that uh, many people still believe and many book is still believe the coefficient of friction cannot be more than 1. I have seen number of students and number of faculty when they object oh no no coefficient of friction cannot be more than 1. Why? Have you tested? No, they have not tested. So, that is why the experiments are very much important. You can see here the nickel on nickel, gold on gold. There are theories of course, we can justify why the coefficient of friction is more than 1 in this case. However, this also says if you go for partial lubrication, coefficient of friction will be reduced. But what is the meaning of partial lubrication? Is it really identified, clearly mentioned? If you go for hydrodynamic lubrication, further coefficient of friction will come down. But this is important. At least we can say whatever the coefficient of friction may be say 1 unit, we are going with uh, some sort of a 0.1 to 0.10, uh, 0.01 to 0.1 that means something like a 1 to 10 percent. Further, if you reduce, it is a 0.1 to 1 percent. So, this is a very important. Another thing which I have realized also that many times there are analysis, of course, in literature people have published results also, they optimize the uh, viscosity, then we need to know what is the tolerance range. If I optimize viscosity something I am using initially 2.2 and I see you no know, it should be 2.25 instead of 2.2 then where, how will I choose a oil? Because VJ2 provides me 2.2 viscosity, VJ3 may be providing 3.2 viscosity these are the nominal viscosities they are not actual viscosities. That, that means the reason is that we need to understand each and everything properly. Let us take a VJ10, it has a viscosity 10, no doubt, but variation that says a minimum kinematic viscosity, there is a possibility 9 and maximum 11, that means plus minus 10 percent variation is there. If I am doing some sort of optimization, choosing initially 10 viscosity and then I say no, optimum viscosity comes around 10.8 from where I will select because that already tolerance range is already given to us that if I choose, uh, if I say 10, quite possible some oil will come with a 9, some oil will come with 11 or maybe some oil will come with a 10 and maybe some oil will come with 10.2, 9.8. So, we really require some sort of a statistical design with these features. If we do not count, we are not really serving the purpose, we are not getting the actual results from that point of view. Now, towards the end in this case again I am showing that every surface is a rough surface. We really require to give more weightage to the surface roughness. Unfortunately, many places they do not consider surface roughness. They assume if I am considering the hydrodynamic lubrication surface roughness is not really required. So, in my uh, thinking that is uh, objectionable, reason being even the two surfaces are completely separated even if then there are some possibility that the, some sort of that particle and the nanometer or micron level enter what will happen, how will we analyze those results. So, this debris accounting is also important and this uh, hydrodynamic and all uh, elastro hydrodynamic uh, boundary lubrication, they are depend on a specific film thickness. So, they are the two feature, what will be the minimum film thickness and what is the surface roughness that is an RMS value of the surface 1 or surface A and what is the RMS value of surface P. So, both are important for us. So, this is where we really require a detailed analysis. Again, we go for detailed analysis, there will be number of equations, number of models available and we need to extract good models, good features using a machine learning algorithm, try to make better formula, better model and come up with a good predictive models. So, in this case we are using the word debris, we say that this is the third body. Even when we introduce a lubricant, lubricant itself is a third body. So, I can, can I say this debris itself acts as a, a lubricant, yes there is a possibility. If the metal or maybe some particle which are very, very soft they are debris, does not matter, we can treat this other lubricant, let us take a carbon or carbon graphite, 
if then comes other debris particles and particularly the shape is a rounded one a spherical shape or maybe a cylindrical shape does not have a sharp edge it will surely be as a lubricant for us. In that situation we need to account we need to dealt with uh, those kind of a debris lubricant itself. So, this is very important another thing what we say that how do we really um, attach lubricant with the surface because uh, in one of the earlier slide I showed in the, this surface uh, there will be some sort of lubricant layer. So, how do we attach this lubricant layer it can be through physical phenomena it can be through chemical phenomena and that is possible to really attached lubricant layer through physical through chemical actions on so. However, we know whenever there is a chemical action there will be some harm to the surface also some material will be removed from a surface. So, we need to be little more careful and we as far as possible physical adsorption will be done or maybe it will be covered in a lecture 8 uh, which will be basically on boundary and mixed lubrication. This is another point when we talk about the parameters let us take a one classical uh, example and there is a wear rate production has been shown of course, this paper uh, we are referring which was which has been published in 2022 and what this says that whatever the classical thing sliding distance and the load earlier we were thinking about only these two parameters are the main parameter to predict the wear. Now, this um, indicates the hardness has a much more weightage compared to the load and sliding distance. If I use the Archer equation we give almost same weightage to all the load the sliding distance and, uh, and the, the, we say that is a, the, the wear rate uh, is proportional is proportional to the load in this case I am using the word L suppose then uh, and the sliding distance may be S and inversely proportional to the hardness. But here the percentages are quite different here the percentage and then the, and then the effect of the hardness is much severe on the wear on the wear production compared to load and compared to sliding. Not only this one the sliding distance and the sliding distance uh, speed is different here we treat in the same manner we say sliding speed you and uh, the effect of sliding distance is the same. However, we know the sliding distance uh, is basically time dependent while sliding speed is uh, in this case if I were trying to change I can change this speed also in this case maybe uh, I can use the word speed here. So, speed is also the factor but here that the it is much more severe compared to the load. But on top of that what are the graphene content which we are mixing it has a much more impact that means when we are talking about the lubricated wear and this archer equation is basically for the unlubricated case that means we are utilizing some archer equation or wear rate prediction based on unlubricated case and we are trying to connect with the lubrication actually we really require very model or we could really iteration or maybe use some sort of good machine learning algorithm for this purpose then only we will be able to predict the right results. So, we can say here we need to imply uh, multivariant analysis we already seen here the graphene percentage is much higher side when we are using the even the equation and the sliding distance load uh, and then sliding speed and hardness they do not have a same kind of uh, percentage weightage naturally they will have a different kind of power and can be, we need to use a power law for this purpose. So, we say the need of employing multivariate analysis considering surface attributes surface attributes indirectly or indirectly that means, if you do go ahead with indirectly already we are doing it, but if you are to directly then we need to continuously think about how one surface is wearing out other surface at each asperity level naturally we require more computational power we require a better algorithm for that purpose. So, that is why I say considering surface attribute to achieve accurate production of the friction and wear that is lacking in present case maybe it is available in few publication, but it is not available to common students or majority of the students. So, we are trying to bring that we say the data driven multivariate machine learning model have a potential which we will try to develop in this case to generate new insight and understanding regarding the tribological feature. So, we are not going to deal with the classical tribology your only mechanism is then defined your mechanism and what are the correction factors and how other factors can be brought it 
or maybe say we need to do a multivariate analysis and come up with the better results. Now, if we do all this, what is the benefit? Learning is one thing, but quite possible we may have a very good economic benefit also. That is what we say successful implementation of tribological knowledge. I am just taking example of India itself, it can save around 1 to 1.5 percent GNP. Rough cost comes around 9 to 12 lakh crore. It will vary year to year and maybe the depending on the person to person. However, this is important. Now, what is really lacking, why we are not getting, say in most of the diabetic book also, which are classical books, shows that coefficient of friction minimum is something like a only polymer over polymer and that shows are something like 0 0.08. But we have seen with the nano additives, we can really reduce a coefficient of friction far lower than that. That means, we need to bring recent trend, recent uh, analysis, recent techniques which can be utilized with the tribology and that give an overall benefit to uh, our society. So, again here say that over the last 60 years, 1966 to this time, we have a number of data, there has been large amount of published experimental data. Now, developing predictive models, we really require mechanism, what is the really underlying mechanism and then we need to come up with some sort of innovative theories. So, the deeper understanding of friction and wear can be achieve or uh, we can really gain with that. So, with this I believe that uh, you will be getting benefit uh, for attending this kind of course and with this I say thank you for attending this lecture.